Hello, it's Sarah. And some of you are wondering where I've been. Yeah, Peggy had asked me that. But um, and I wanted to thank Penny Venturino. You have been watching a lot of my videos, girl. Uh, so thank you. Anywho, I've been here and there. Um, you know, I I'm trying to get in some summer stuff. So I've been I went canoeing. And I've been going to the beach a lot more because Maddie lives near the beach. Um, gonna be watching my nephew Liam tomorrow. So I figured I'd get in here today and just share. I have been claying, I've been doing some um, doodle flowers a la. Um, oh, her name just, I just went blank. I can picture her face. Ginny. Ginny, the same as my son. My son's dog name is Ginny. Ginny Baker. Um, she, uh, did a great video, just loved hers, and I mean, mine are okay, I mean, actually, looking at them in the camera right now, they look pretty cool, just all bunched up like a field of flowers, and I made some leaves, I have a board here that I'm going to put them on, um, and I'll show you those in one sec, I went to... I was going to use some, these are called, I, I, I threw out the wrapper, but these are pastel crayons, but they're not oils, and they're called something. Oh, dang it. They're called, uh, wait a minute. Here it is. They're just called pastels. Fine Art Studio Pastels. So they're not, it's oil free, long lasting pigment. I, I have oil pastels, but Jenny had mentioned the pan pastels, and I think these are a lot, these are a little more chalky in texture. Um, but I didn't end up using them. I think maybe on, I used it on some yellow. I think I put a tiny bit on this one. I don't remember, but I'm glad I got them. They were only six bucks. Um, and this is the Master's Touch, which I think might be Hobby Lobby's brand. No, Master's Touch might be in, in all the stores, but it's they were $5.99 for a 12 count. So I figured I could just have them to play with another time, but I didn't end up using them. I did use my Posca paint pens. That's what... Um, Ginny had used in her videos to just highlight everything, which I loved. And I didn't use mica powders or anything else. Um, I just antiqued with Payne's Gray. So I just took Payne's Gray paint, which I'm not usually a fan of antiquing um, my tiles. Like when I do a mosaic, I don't usually... So basically what you would do is, and I can't find um, my Payne's Gray, but you take just like a bottle of paint, I've used black before. Payne's Gray is just a little more on the blue side. And then um, take a brush, and I just see like a little darkness here I'm going to get off. Take my brush and go in all the nooks and crannies, and then the paint gets in all the detail lines. And I also did texturize, so I used, um, I actually, Ginny I think uses sandpaper. But I use this little texture sheet, and I think it's called, oh, it says what it's called. It's called, oh, it doesn't say. Made in China, sand. So I just used this one called sand, and I just, like, gave it a little texture. So if you look at them, I'll show you them now. But anyway, I wanted to say, I went, I got this little stamp set. This is just called coffee, and there's seven pieces in here. I'm planning on making a little... Um, box like this with all the coffee um, clay tiles on it. Uh, what else did I get? I got this bag of rocks. It was $2.99 because when I went canoeing, we pulled up to shore like a little embankment that we did it twice and I found these, this rock. It says tuckered in. That's where we were. And I want to say this may be the name, Li Ning, or Ling, I don't know if that's a name, 2017. And it's, I think it's like a kid painted it, and it's a little fishy, and there was another one, but I happened to find this, and it was just so exciting. You know, it doesn't take much to get me 
excited. So I bought these rocks because I want to paint them just in a fun way, not like dot painting or anything real fancy, just some cute little flowery, um, and I'll do a video when I do them. Um, maybe I'll have Maya and we'll do them together because uh, she goes kayaking a lot and I just thought it would be so fun to leave these rocks because um, Joe and I are planning another trip um, canoeing and um, then for someone to find it it's just it was just fun and I think I'll put an aspirational word on there or just a um, you know a nice word um, so anyway all right I'll show you so that's all I got I'm pretty sure oh no 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 I got these fondant cutters um, did I get these at, I think I got these at Hobby Lobby too. And these are just really big because to make these flowers, I use cookie cutters mostly. I ended up having to cut my own, so these bigger ones, I didn't have anything big enough. Like my biggest cookie cutter was only this big. So, and I, I mean, I didn't even go that much bigger, but basically I just cut out a shape of a round I have round punches so I just cut this out and then I just cut it out with a um, with my exacto blade but I just used what I have I use mostly round and then this little um, flower shaped one and then I really wanted to make some littler flowers Ginny had a really cool um, so anyway these fondant cutters I ended up using this one which I really like that's this pink layer um, and I use this one on this blue layer. So just to make it a little different, and I mean I could have gone, let's see, yeah, I could have I could have used both of these, but I was just I felt like I had enough for this project, so I just stopped there. But um, these were super cheap. I think this four pack was like $2.99. So um, and then I have all these other ones. These were some that I think I was gifted. I think Sherry sent me a pack. And then I ended up, I bought a pack um, online, but you can just get them right at, um, in the baking aisle at the craft stores. All right, so now, that being said, I'll show you my flowers. And it, all these leaves are from um, a cookie cutter that I had. So let me go in a little closer. They really look nice from far away, though. So the one difference that I found was I used gemstones that's the only real real big difference that I did compared to um, Ginny's so I and then I embedded um, I'll just use my pencil I embedded these little beads in here so this is a fondant cutter and it had an impression so that's why I embedded them there but then I just used different tools to make different marks in the clay and then I used my Posca paint pens to highlight everything and these are just little balls of clay I was going to show she has um, specific little cutters I can't think of the name of them but they're tiny little cutters I just rolled out a snake of clay and then just cut it into um, the same sized piece and rolled them into balls and made this little uh, I liked it though I liked it a lot that was one of the things I really loved about her. her designs were so pretty and like of course I didn't love any of mine I mean they're all right <laughs> but when you see them all together in a group they're awesome so all right so here's what you'll see is all this little black speckly parts is by using that sand um, texturizing sheet it left these divots in the clay so that when you add the um, the paint it kind of gets stuck in the holes and it just adds dimension I'm not a huge fan of antiquing I like my bright color as you guys know if you watch my videos but for this project I just thought it made sense because doodle flowers you know and if you were drawing them they'd have a lot of different doodly stuff going on so I just wanted to add more I thought more was better um, but I did keep it kind of simple with the gems like there's just a green one in the center most of them have them in the center and that's it a couple I went around the outside but very few so this was a fondant cutter and I think this was that piece of paper so I just cut it out 
with my X-Acto blade and then just stack them and I bake them according to the directions on the packaging and then after antiquing it so after I paint the whole thing with black paint and then wipe it away and it only gets stuck stuck in the nooks and crannies you take your Posca paint pens and I just made these little white dots and these little white lines mostly white I actually touched all the yellow balls of clay with the white too to highlight it so not a ton not a ton of different um, colors or all that stuff so this one this one I did like I did use like a um these yellow pieces are actually little teardrop cuts that I just I could show you how I did it but I added those to the edge because I just thought there was too much room in here so again and this is another fondant cutter but I just put little balls of yellow clay in the holes and a gem in the middle and this one is these are just I think little balls of clay that I then just um, put a toothpick through so I just use a toothpick it's kinda like when I do um, a applique clay so I just made and that's just a star cookie cutter that I just kinda left an impression with so they're all different they're just but I really love that making the balls of clay I love that and then I put the gems Swarovski crystals on the edges of that I think I only made like I think these two are the same I only made a couple that were the same design so the same amount of layers and I did the same way except for I put a smaller see how I made a bigger um, thing on the very bottom and a smaller one on this one and none of them are exactly um, straight or whatever there are a lot of crooked ones this one was cool. I didn't put a round one behind it. I just kept it with the, um, like this. So I used that flower shaped one and just left it that shape. I did a couple of little ones that way too. Mostly little ones. So the little ones only have one, two, like three layers of clay. Most of the big ones have three to four. One, two, three, four. Most of them have about four. One, two, three, four, yeah. And then a gemstone. So I like this one. This again, I just like cut um, like a teardrop shape and then just stuck it in the nooks and crannies of that. So none of mine are the same really. One, two, three, four layers. And just use the big uh, flower shape on top. This one I was trying to use... Um, a tool that I have and I can't think I think it's a, called a perler or something when I did polymer clay adventure Sydney Holt had used this specific tool for one of her projects so I had the tools and I never use them so I thought well I will make some circles just some little tiny circles and I mean I don't love this one but I think it's different and it's whatever and then just more little ones but see, I really loved making those dots. I thought those dots were fun to play with. All right, so, and then I made a bunch of leaves. And some of them, like, I got lazy. I stopped texturizing, like, a batch I made. This batch doesn't have any texturizing on it. And then one of them, I forgot to make the little, um, like, stem lines. I can't even find it on one side of the leaf but I figured this was enough and I just did them in like three different colors because what I'm gonna do um, I, I could do this on camera I'm gonna take this um, I'm gonna go back up cradle board and I'm going to see I haven't prepped it so I never put um, gesso or anything on it and it probably needs to be sanded so I'm gonna use my uh, all-purpose sealer and I'm just going to give it a coat with a light blue, probably this light blue. And then I'm going to let that dry and sand it. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to do some color blending. So I'm going to use some white to put cloudy marks in. And I'm going to use dark blues so that it's just all kind of mottled sky. And then a little green on the bottom just to represent sky and ground and then these I'm not sure but I think I'm going to just glue all of them onto here and 
paint the stems. Uh, Ginny had done her stems in clay and she did like three I think. Three um, main flowers. I don't like the orange next to each other. So that's how I would like arrange it. Make sure like my colors are all over the place. And then just like paint stems going down and then depending on how many I needed I would put a few leaves I mean I might not even be able to fit them here and there so we'll see I mean I may just put them around the edges like they're I mean that look might look kinda crazy so I, I may leave them off I don't know I just figured it would be nice to have that little bit of green playing and let's see they look kind of neat on the edge so that would be just a design choice that I would make after I paint the whole thing but see then I do think I need some in the middle too so I would probably not worry about them coming off of off of stems so we'll see maybe I won't even make stems and I'll just it'll just be kind of like a let me see I don't know if I like that with the leaves. It doesn't, it looks too disorganized. But I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to paint this and seal it and sand it and come back and I'll be ready to um, do the final painting and then I'm going to glue. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so I haven't sanded yet, but I wanted to show you. So when you take a piece of raw wood and you add these sealers to it, it actually brings out the tooth in the wood more. I mean, this was definitely, it needed to be sanded, but I figure why, I hate prep, so I don't sand it twice, but you could have sanded it twice. I don't know, I don't know. It's not that big a deal for me. Um, so this was the all-purpose sealer that I used. I mixed it with, so one-to-one, -one, basically like this much sealer, this much paint, mix it together and then I paint it on there so it's a thin coat it's sheer I should say right but it has all this like it's very rough I mean you can hear my hand now this one I prepped with gesso because I think I'm gonna paint this gold um, and it's the same thing though the gesso is very toothy right like that's why we like it for our mixed media projects so it's definitely rough and I'm gonna go out and sand these and sweat probably to death because it's like 100 degrees out um, but I'll sand these and then I'll be back in and you'll see how smooth they are and um, I'll go ahead and paint this one and get it ready and I'm going to paint this gold like I said because this is going to be the substrate that I use for the other mosaic that I'm making the um, the Zen one the one that's like uh, I have all those tiles but yeah, I got distracted by, oh sorry, something stuck to it. But I'll end up sanding it off. Anyway, all right, so I'll be right back. All right, I am back. This is um, Dazzling Metallics Glorious Gold. And I used the Folk Art Enamels Metallic Gold first. So it kind of got messed up because look, there's a little glass on the top of this. This is like for painting glass. Gloss finish acrylic paint, and it says dish, dishwasher safe, um, but it says it's acrylic paint for glass and ceramics. So it was weird because when I was putting it on, it was not really sticking. It was really weird. So I kind of wiped some off, and I, I just kept moving. I let it dry, and then I just put this on top. Just, you know, and the, the thing is, this one I'm going to use for... Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. This one. My Buddha. So, all of these, see now I'm going to take this. Um, oh man, this is going to make me want to do it. Oh boy. Um, so, I'll come back and do another video for this, but all that gold will be getting covered up. That was my point. So, really, you're just going to see a tiny bit of it. So, I really wasn't concerned with. The final finish it wasn't that wasn't as big a deal as it would be if, if you could really see all the paint 
because I'm a painter, so I know. Anywho, all right, so I can't wait to do that. So I'm gonna, I'll do that in another video. But this is the what we're working on today. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so this is just, um, I think one coat, right? Yeah, one coat. I have gold. See this? I got, I'm gonna wipe it. I should have wiped it off camera. But I want to get some of this off. This is a um, like a craft mat, and it's got like a uh, I don't know. It's it's like a smooth surface that you can get you can peel paint right off of it. So I'm gonna get this off so I don't get gold all over. Not that that would be a bad thing because I love gold. Gold is good. All right. Sorry about that. And I have two dogs staring at me. No, I don't. They left. All right. So now, I've given this a coat of, like I said, one-to-one -one paint to sealer. And now I've sanded it. And, I mean, it wasn't the best box to begin with. Like, there's still some rough parts because that would be, um, like, I'm just going to grab. This is, like, a rough sandpaper. There, that's better. Because that's a really rough part. But this is not what you're going to notice about the piece. That's my hope anyway. If someone's paying such, a such close attention to that, oh well. <laughs> I'm not. Alright, so anywho definitely smooth and ready to go. So what I'm going to do is using a fairly, I need water, so this is dirty water, but whatever, it'll work. I'm um, going to use some blue. This is a super pretty color. I have a couple go-to blues out here. Let's see. I really, I think I'm going to use this teal as my dark blue. I just like it. Then this one's called, called Tide Pool, and these two are super, so it's going to be kind of tealy, and I like that because the blue clay has a tealy feel to it, tealy. Um, so definitely the dark blue. Um, I'm going to stick with the light blue. I'm going to use white. I just flung the paintbrush. White for a little, like cloudiness and then I have this leaf green and when you add blue to green it kind of turns teal too so I'll get like a tealy green color and I have like a light green so let's go with um, citron yeah I think I'm gonna do that and we'll see what happens so I'm gonna put the ocean reef back so let me grab a palette or, yeah, I have palette paper. Oh, we have to get our um, August art journal page done, too. So I think this week I'll be, do, I'll do it this week for sure, because I think August, tomorrow is Matt's birthday. Matthew is turning 31. Um, but anywho, um, yeah, the 29th, so we're almost out of August. It's cray cray. All right. So let me put out some of these, this teal, light blue, and white. <clears throat> and I'm not going to, let's see, yeah, I'm going to use a pretty big brush. This is at least a one inch, yeah, a one inch brush. And I'm going to get it wet first so that it's slick. Oh, Lord. That's Kirby. And I'm going to get some of this teal color. I'm not going to worry about the sides as much right now because I just want to uh, get the front going. Then I'm going to go into this lighter blue. Try not to get it on my shirt because I really like my shirt today. And probably 
like that's good. It's enough. I'm going to take a little more light blue. And then a tiny bit of white. Can you see what I'm doing? I think it would be a great technique for water too. But that's my sky. I'm just making sure it got on the edges. And that's why, because I did it light blue underneath, um, anything that shines through. So is that, that's pretty. I like it. All right, so I don't know what this green's going to do now because I don't want to go too far up it. But I'm going to put the dark green and the citron out. And I hope I don't screw up the whole thing. Turn it over. I'm going to rinse my brush a little. Dark green. And then the light green. And you kind of just keep it there and it's going to blend together. And that's it. I think I'm stopping right there. And then I will um, do the top and the sides. Like maybe, hmm, I'm going to take this green and just do the bottom. I'll blend it on the bottom. Kind of do a, mish, a mix of both colors. I'm just finishing it. Um, I kind of messed that up. And then I'll do the same thing on the sides. And remember, I'm going to be putting flowers all over this, too. So, I don't like that I just left that, like, brush mark right there, but whatever. I need more. This teal is a gorgeous color. This is a Craft Smart paint, but it's like a multi-surface premium satin so and I generally wouldn't pick a, a craft smart mart paint uh oh this isn't even the right color damn it I'm gonna put it back um but I was looking for colors for dotting and someone one of the girls who's been doing the dotting videos use these the craft smart um because it's different um finishes. So this is a multi-surface satin. So um, 
they recommended it so I got it for dotting and then all of a sudden I just love it so much so this is the teal that was called tide pool which is still a gorgeous color but I don't want to mess up my whole thing now that I I'm gonna go up top with this My brush has a lot of water in it, I can tell. Um, I was thinking of doing my art journal page this month kind of like a, a, a canoe trip. So, because I just went on a little canoe trip I wanted to um, think about being on the water outside in nature. So I think that could tend toward a really cool art journal page. This is so fun. So I mean, just do your best. It it's it's a background so basically it's a background don't get worked up if it's not blendy and you know whatever like I'm not a professional I think you should be able to do it it's not hard at all so just do your best see look I just got a splop of paint right there that makes me mad Ugh. Like, again, I, I, it's a background, so I don't need to really be getting this serious about it, but it sure is fun while you're doing it. Uh, and then, once it's good and dry, you're going to need um, glue. I like, I must say Gorilla Glue. I never use Gorilla Glue, so that wouldn't be what I'm thinking, but um, it is called, oh my gosh, no brain, um, Weld Bond. That's the brand name for it, and it's what I've always used for my mosaics because um, it was recommended to me when I was doing uh, glass mosaics. I just totally didn't clean my brush first. It's fine. Good enough. Um, anywho, I could definitely blend a little more white into there, but it's not necessary. But I am doing a good job. Good job, Sarah. Why, thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Um, and this is just an old, I don't know how old it is, but it's not like an, a good brand or anything. These, I think these are by Craftsmart too. So, I, I mean, I thought I got this at AC Moore, but I, I want to say Michael's now, because it might be, but it might be AC Moore too. Um, I'm not sure. Right, I'm going to set this aside because I am done. Well, my dogs might walk in it. Let me move it over here. Um, so I'll be back. I'm going to, I'm going to just hit it with the dryer and, but look how pretty. Hope for the best. I don't know what the flowers are going to look like on there, but I'm hoping they look pretty. So I'll be right back. <laughs> 